with people and being promoted in your current or future field. Organizations pay and promote better when you have excellent communication and leadership skills. In the next 10 minutes, you will take away three keys to becoming a better presenter and communicator today with this presentation entitled the pep talk PEP -E talk apply these simple techniques and your next presentation will receive a more positive reception this 8 to 10 minutes presentation is project number 2 organize your speech from the competent communication program manual the objectives of this speech are first to select the right words and sentence structure to communicate your ideas clearly, accurately, and vividly. Second, use rhetorical devices to enhance and emphasize ideas. Three, eliminate jargon and unnecessary words. Use correct grammar. Our presenter, Douglas Wilson, has been a Toastmaster since November 1998. It was because of the three keys you will take away today and the proven program of developing communication skills from Toastmasters International that he was able, out of 25,000 contestants from 11,000 Toastmasters clubs in 90 countries, to be judged the second best speaker in the 2006 World Championship of Public Speaking. Take away these tips and be a better presenter today. Please welcome distinguished Toastmaster and past District 58 South Carolina Governor <coughs> Douglas Wilson as he presents the pep talk. Please welcome Mr. Douglas. Have you ever read a book, gotten some great information from it, and then about a year or so later, maybe two years later, you read it again, and all of a sudden you discover things in that that you hadn't seen the first time? And you say, how did I miss that? How could I have not seen that the first time I went through? Well, I would say it's because you're a different person now than you were the first time you read that. So each time you read a book and you go back and read it again, you're a different person. You've aged, you've matured, you've gotten some experience. And I was re-listening to a book called Speak Like Churchill, Stand Like Lincoln by James C. Humes. Probably one of the best books, basic books on public speaking and communications and leadership that I have ever read. In fact, it's in my permanent collection of the most important books I've ever read on communication skills. And when I teach classes and when I uh, counsel somebody new that's really wanting to take the next step, it says, read this book. Because it's by far the best book that you'll ever read to be able to learn some very essential skills about being an excellent communicator. And it was part of that book and also partly of the coaching I got to compete for the World Championship that I uncovered three essential ingredients in putting together a great presentation. I'm going to share those with you today, what we call the pep talk. Before you ever set pen to paper, to put your wonderful prose on that paper, to construct your great speech, you've got to know what it is you're going to talk about. Now this was something that wasn't easy for me because I would write a speech and I'd be practicing it and giving it, and my, one of my coaches, Shaquise Newton, would say, but what's your premise, Douglas? She was trying to say, what is the message you want us to take away? What do you want us to think, feel, or do differently when you're done speaking than before we heard you? I had no concept that I needed to know what I was going to talk about first. I put the speech together, and it takes a life of its own. It starts to come together. Oh, that, that's good. That's got a great message. But she taught me, and James C. Humes taught me as well, if I went back and read reread the book, that the very first thing you need to know is what it is you're going to talk about. And you need to know it so well, Dolly, that you can summarize it in ten words 
or fewer. Now, for many, that's not easy. I've heard it said, and you might have heard it said, if you can write the summary of your speech on the back of a business card, then that's good. But they have no idea, Rupali, how small I can write. Put a whole paragraph on the back of a business card. So the very first thing that you need to do is to establish your first P. Your premise. What is the message that you want somebody else to walk away with? What's the key thing? If you, if you didn't have five to ten minutes, or eight to ten minutes, or an hour, if you only made one sentence, that that individual could take away the message that you had in that content from that speech. One sentence. Ten words or fewer. Now, I, as I said, I didn't have that concept, but when I did my speech that I won the district competition with, it was quite simple. The speech premise was, it's not about me. And it was about being considerate of others and not being so self-absorbed that you miss out on something that's going on with somebody else and a way to console them and to be able to walk, walk them through that process. So the premise helps you to bring together all of the information you need to make your speech resonate with your audience. Because here's the key. If you don't understand your message, then your speech will be a mess. I'll say that again. If you don't understand your message, your speech will be a mess. So you understand what your premise is so that you know that if I understand what I want to say, and I've got all of these stories in my life or these life experiences that I'm going to bring to bear to help make my point, Joseph, you know, tell a story, make a point, is what Bill Gove said was the key to professional speaking. Tell a story that illustrates a particular point that you want the individual to walk away with, and they'll understand it because people love stories. And that's why you'll hear me many times when you give a speech, I didn't hear a story. I want to hear your story. Who are you? How did you get there? And what's the process that you went through to get there? What's your premise? What's the message you want us to think, feel, or do differently when you were done speaking? Now, if you understand this, then you'll understand the next part of this process, which is the E in my pep talk, which means edit. Here's the key to a great speech. No great speech was ever written. It was rewritten and rewritten and rewritten. In other words, you start out with the basic framework. You say, That's, that looks pretty good, but there's ways to improve that. How do you take a 1,200 word speech and condense it to be delivered in a five to seven minute format? Well, it's by pruning out all the excess words pulling out all the inappropriate words, pulling out of the, the wrong stories that aren't really making your point for you. And so the key to edit, and this is a subtext of this, is there's a lot of this going on. A lot of editing involved in that. In each of the speeches, and when I completed in 2006, they were three different speeches. The speech I gave at district, a completely different speech for regional, which is then was the semifinals, and yet a completely new speech for the finals, the world championship of public speaking, and each had to be significantly different from the one before. And so there were probably 15 to 20 major revisions in each of those speeches, and in each of those major revisions, maybe 10 to 15 different sub-changes, maybe a tweak here, a tweak there, pull out a sentence here, and as they refined it and grew, the sentences grew shorter, the topics grew smaller and more simply related, and people understood them more clearly. So if you don't understand your message... Your speech will be a what? Your mess. Point. A mess. And so the subtext to this one is, if I can coin the phrase of Johnny Cochran in the O.J. Simpson trial, if it does not fit, you must omit. So the editing process tells me that if this story doesn't fit my premise, if it doesn't hold true to this message that I want you to walk away with, then it doesn't belong in this speech. 
Now that was especially critical to me in the second speech, the division, the regional speech, because I built that speech around a quote by Marianne Williamson. You probably heard it before. It's not our darkness that we're afraid of; it's our light, and that we are hesitant to claim to be beautiful and bright and, and powerful, and that's something that we should buy into. And I built my speech around that. But a week before the speech was to be delivered in contest, it was a mess because I didn't understand this. And it wasn't until I took that quote out, Lupali, that all of a sudden the speech took on a new life of its own. And I actually discovered what my true premise was, and it was be yourself and you can change the world. And that was a lot. So if you don't understand your message, your speech will be a what? Mess. 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 And if you do understand that message, you know exactly what to put in and exactly what needs to come out because if it does not fit, you must omit. omit. And that brings us to the final phase because if you've omitted all the totally unnecessary words and sentences and ideas and concepts in your speech, and you've got only those things necessary to make your point, then you have time to do this. I just gave you an example of what this is. Who can tell me? Pause. Pause. The most powerful part of your presentation is the pause. Why? Because if you ask a question, have you ever had somebody ask a question in a speech? And before you even had time to think about it, they were off on something else. They'd ask another question, another question behind. Well, wait, 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 wait a minute. I haven't thought about that first question yet. Right, Levi? Or maybe they'll make a comment. You say, oh, I need to write that down. But they're off to something else. You never got a chance to reflect on what they had to say. Now, here's the key to the importance of the pause. Without reflection... There's no connection. Connection is key. So if you take away these three keys, your next presentation will be extremely powerful because you understand the premise, the message you want them to take away, because if you don't understand your message, your speech will be a mess. mess. And that allows you to know what stays in and what has to be removed because if it does not fit, you must omit. omit. And the power of the pause is that without reflection, there's no connection. And connection is key. And that's your pep talk for today. Mr. Toastmaster.